All right, guys, Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another video here. Um, this is being done as a live webinar. I'm also recording it to save for anybody who couldn't make the webinar, but today's topic is going to be identifying entries in the Forex markets. What we are going to do is go over um, exact methodologies of how you can identify opportunities to enter. As you guys know, Forex is a very complicated, very hard to succeed in type of industry. There's a very low success rate, somewhere between 10 and 2% of traders actually become consistently profitable. That being said, there is a series of steps you can take and things you can follow to help increase your chances. And one of the biggest being having a set strategy, having a set plan of action when you go into the markets so that you can create consistent and improvable results. When you have a strategy you follow, you do the same thing over and over and over. You can go back and look at a sample size of data and figure out what you can do better to improve that, that sample, that data, right? So you guys all know that um, trading a plan and having a journal are hugely important things. If you've listened to any of my content, you understand how big they are. And identifying your entries and finding a position to enter the markets is going to be a very critical part of that plan. Now, I don't think entries are as critical as your target or your stop loss because when you get in, um, you really could manage a trade depending on the amount of time you hold it to be a winner or a loser depending on, uh, again, how long you hold it and what your ultimate goal is. An entry, however, is extremely important in the sense that you need to have a consistent plan of action of when to get into the trade just as well as you need to have a stop loss and target predetermined before you enter a trade. So my students of, of CoreFX know that we call it set, your stop, your entry, and your target. Now, they all need to be predetermined and they are all extremely critical to your success. However, um, we're gonna be just covering the entry point here and how professional traders go about determining what is going to say, I'm entering the trade here. Now, for those of you who don't know, I'm Corey Smith. I am the founder of CoreFX. I'm a professional Forex trader. I've been trading professionally for two years. I've been trading in general for almost six. I um, have a private mentorship program as well as multiple free streams of educational content. So if you like what you see here, subscribe to the YouTube page. Throw some comments. If you have any ideas of videos you'd like me to make or anything like that, just throw them in there and I will make some videos depending on what you guys want. I'm going to go ahead and hop into this topic here of identifying entries. So um, identifying an entry is going to depend on your trading strategy and your style of trading. Now, scalpers are going to have a totally different way of entering markets as swing traders who might even have a totally different way of entering as position traders. And these entries can be something you're watching the minute chart to find an exact moment and you click the button really fast and you click it in and out whether your stop loss isn't even a set stop loss if you're scalping that fast of intraday moves that you don't even need to set a stop loss because you're not taking your eyes off the chart and you're going to close it at a predetermined price that you see uh, all the way up to position traders that get into trades based off maybe a major price level broken or so and hold for uh, weeks or months at a time maybe you are entering a trade purely off of a news event that came out or purely off of uh, something that happened fundamental wise um, there's a number of different ways that people trade, but basically I'm going to be going over the general bias of how to determine your entry and how you're going to pull that trigger. We don't just want to enter any trade that looks good. We don't just want to enter any time uh, you see an engulfing candle or any time support and resistance is hit or any time 382 Fibonacci level holds. Um, you want a very structured, determined, predetermined, and calculated trading plan where a number of things must line up before you enter a trade. However, that one thing must be there that determines when you get into a trade. So although you need a number of different things in your trading plan to line up before you can validate a trade and get into it, there needs to be that one thing that triggers you into a trade, right? So that's why I call it a trigger, a call to action. That one moment that when this X variable happens, you do Y, right? And Y is entering the trade or placing a pending order, you know, but then the call to action, the trigger would be that pending order being taken out, 
So um, talking about triggers, there's a number of different triggers that could happen. There's price action triggers and there's secondary indicators. So for price action triggers, uh, we have support and resistance, we have candlestick patterns, we have supply and demand zones, we have trend lines, counter trend lines, chart patterns. There's a number of different price action tools that we can use as our entry. Now, uh, what exactly I mean by this is, let's say support and resistance is your trigger. You could have a trading plan where this needs to happen, that needs to happen, that needs to happen, that needs to happen before I'll trade. But to actually execute the trade, I need a support or resistance level to be broken and closed, right? So if you have a support holding and you want to go short in a downtrend, you can have your trading trigger be when price breaks that support and is able to close below it, right? Then you can have, um, if you trade, support and resistance ranges or reversals. You could have when that support shows that it's holding and it's not breaking. When you have a um, bullish engulfing candle off that support, close. That could show you, okay, momentum came to the upside. This support looks like it's holding. I'm going to go long, right? So there's a number of different um, ways you can go about each individual one of these. There's supply and demand zones. You can have limit orders set for when a supply or demand zone gets hit, you think price is going to immediately reject it and go in the opposite direction. You can have trend lines be triggers. Again, like with support and resistance zones, you can have trend line breaks and closes, trend lines holding. You can have a number of different um, aspects of each of these price action tools be a trigger for you to enter a trade. You can have a chart pad. You could trade exclusively head and shoulder patterns on the four hour chart as reversals. You can trade um, bullish or bearish trend continuation patterns, flags, wedges, um, pennants, rectangles. You can trade purely reversal patterns, you know, rising wedges in an uptrend, falling wedges in a downtrend, double bottoms, double tops. Um, all of these different things can be a call to action. Then we also have secondary indicators. I love using secondary indicators for call to action because they are very, very objective. They're very black and white. If the 20 SMA crosses the 50 SMA, there's no denying that they crossed. There's two lines that when they cross each other, that is a call to action, right? That could be your, okay, that's what's going to be my final trigger. When that moving average crosses, that's when I know to get in the market, right? They are very um, easy to identify, easy to backtrack and analyze your results and see how it performs. So you have MACD buy and sell signal. There's a buy and sell line um, when they cross over in the MACD. There's overbought and oversold levels in RSI, 80, 20, 30, 70. Um, there's Fibonacci levels on a Fibonacci. You can use the break or hold of Fibonacci support and resistance zones, 382, 50, 618, 786. Whatever it is you trade, you could have um, Fibonacci levels be your trigger. You could have divergence, divergence on stochastics, RSI, whatever it is that you use when there's divergence between price and the indicator. And, uh, you know, maybe you have a double top form and divergence is there. Divergence being there has to be there. And when you see the divergence formed, that's your trigger. Um, parabolic SAR breaks. Parabolic SAR is another indicator that trails price. And you could have it break uh, when price breaks the indicator and it flips to the top or bottom of price. You could have that be an indicator. You can have a Bollinger Band bounce be an indicator, a Bollinger Band um, tightening be an indicator. There's a number of different ways you can do this. However, um, having it and following it is what is going to matter. Okay, so um, write down price action, support, resistance, candlestick, supply and demand, trend line, chart pattern, there's more as well. But just write these down if you want so that you can um, save it for reference when building your trading plan, especially moving averages, uh, MACD, RSI, FIB, Divergence, Parabolic, SAR, Bollinger Band. These are all secondary indicators you can find endless information on online. I'm not going to sit here and go through the technical uh, breakdown of each one of these indicators. That's something you can find in a two-second Google search anywhere in any book. I want to go over things that aren't in the books, aren't anywhere as you can just find. Things that professional traders find, discover, develop, back test, demo test, live trade, and determine what does and what doesn't work, right? So um, that's what I have here. So write these down if you want examples, but I really just want to go over these concepts with you guys so that you guys can understand and see how to apply these to actual trading. 
So taking it over to these charts, just to show you guys some real live type of price action examples. Um, something that you can do to practice what you want to set as your triggers to get an idea of what kind of triggers there are. It really all comes down to you as a person, what fits your personality, what fits your psychological makeup, what fits what you enjoy. We, we don't want a Forex trade. Yes, people get into trading in the financial markets as a way of financial freedom and achieving that point in life where they can pass down wealth and knowledge to the next generation and not have to work for somebody else their whole life and all this and that. Yes, that's all great. However, at the end of the day, we also should have a passion and desire and enjoyment out of trading. And that is something that is huge and very, very critical to your success. If these charts bore you and you don't looking at these charts, you don't like looking at them and studying them, uh, there's probably another profession out there that you would be better suited for. If you don't enjoy it, you're not going to excel to your maximum potential. So I open a chart like this on a Sunday afternoon when markets are about to open, and I'm just as excited as I was six years ago when I first saw one of these charts. I'm thrilled and totally engulfed with passion about this market, and you should be too. Um, if you're brand new to this and you don't know if you have that passion yet, that's fine. If you've been doing this a long time, you've been losing a lot of money, you don't have that passion, um, there's nothing wrong with that. There's plenty of other professions out there. There's plenty of other ways to become financially free to, to find what you love to do. So first and foremost, you need to make sure you find an entry strategy, trading strategy and all that fits your personality and you enjoy. If you can't stand secondary indicators, don't build a strategy with a trigger based off a secondary indicator. You're most likely not going to follow it and you're just going to disobey your trading plan, which is worse than not having a trading plan. So um, mess around with these different trading uh, trade trigger identifiers that I'm going to go over here with you guys and see what you like. Shoot me over an email. Shoot me over some trades you've taken. Shoot me over some back testing you've done. Um, any questions you have about these, shoot it over to me. I love, like I said, I love trading. I love everything about it. I love traders. I love talking to traders. I love interacting with traders, student of mine or not. I love it. Send me over anything you want relating to this topic or any topic, Forex. I'll get back to you. But that being said, um, starting with price action triggers, just to show you guys examples of what I mean by these. Again, this is not scripted. I don't have any charts here where I have examples waiting and ready. I'm just going to go with it. I always have the euro dollar for a lot of my analysis stuff just because it's very heavily traded. It's pretty structured. Everybody follows it. Um, so everybody can kind of relate to it. So um, let's say price action. Let's say support and resistance is what you want to make your trigger based off of. Now, support and resistance is something that I recommend everybody has as part of your trading plan, whether it be um, you're trading on the hourly chart and you need it to be hitting support or resistance on the daily chart or whether you need it to be 15 minute support and resistance, whatever it may be, I think you should include support and resistance in your trading plan. It doesn't have to be your trigger, but it should be something that is relevant and there with every trade you make. Whether you're a reversal trader, trend trader, um, range trader, whatever type of trader, I think support and resistance is extremely critical. Now, that being said, you could also have support and resistance be your trigger. Let's say, for example, with this chart, Right, the euro dollar looking left, it's been in a long-term uptrend. Yeah, we had a little bit of a sell-off and violation, but the uptrend resumed. Now, this 121 level of resistance where this red line is drawn could be where you say, okay, I need to identify a trend, I need to uh, have a trend line bounce with an engulfing candle on a Fibonacci level, whatever your, your um, criteria is for your trading plan, but your trigger, what gets you into your trade could be, okay, when price breaks this resistance. Now, what you guys have to understand is trading is very, very, very technical. You need to have a trading plan that is very clear and structured. You should be, the saying professional trading with a trading plan is that you should have, somebody random should be able to pick up your trading plan and follow it exactly without getting to any point and being like, wait, what do they consider support and resistance? Or wait, what do they consider a uh, moving average cross, right? It needs to be clear as it can be. So that being said, determine, okay, a support and resistance is an area on a chart that um, price has reacted to at least 
two times. And um, there's been a significant three-day plus sell-off each time resistance being respected. Whatever it may be. I have a whole video going over support and resistance and how to identify the levels. If you check that out in my um, YouTube page. However, you need to have it determined. So, okay, let's say um, this resistance has been respected one time, two times, three times, four times, right? So this is a valid resistance. What we could say is I'm going to place an order above this resistance. Let's say we're going to put a pending buy stop order up above this resistance. And I want to get in when price breaks this resistance. So price is coming, candle form, boom. We could have gotten in right here at 121.02, let's say. We got in on a break of it, price shot all the way up to there. And then price continued to go higher, right? So that could have been your trade. Your entry could have been, okay, this resistance not only needs to be broken, but to show that it's not a false break and it's not going to retrace, it needs to break and close. So your entry could have been, uh, this is an ideal of a breakout because you're getting out so late of this breakout, but your entry could have been on the break and close of this candle. Your entry could be when resistance is broken, your trigger I mean, could be when the resistance is broken, then price comes back to retest it. Um, where do we have an example of that? Right here. This could have been your resistance. It was broken, but you wait until it comes back to retest it as now support. Whatever your trigger could have been something in here. Maybe your trigger was this hammer candle with this rejection wick. Off this zone, boom, bounced up. Um, you could have, again, this is, this is kind of showing two and one. A candlestick pattern could be a trigger. Very, very, very favored of mine. I love candlestick patterns being trade triggers especially these strong patterns, bullish and bearish engulfing candles, long rejection wick reversal candles, um, spinning tops and dojis of those. Those aren't my favorite as they're kind of more so indecisive candles than they are a clear direction or change of momentum, but they could be used to. So there's tweezer bottoms. There's all kinds of different uh, end tops. There's all kinds of different triggers and candlestick patterns out there, but I, I love using candlestick patterns as my trigger. I'll, I'll need, let's say, a support resistance trend line, uh, moving average across, or, or, or the 20 has to be above the 50, and the 50 has to be above the 200. There needs to be an uptrend. Um, we need to have set a higher high and pulled back, and now the trigger is going to be a candlestick pattern on that level that in my pullback strategy I wanted price to come to. And my exact trigger to enter is the close of that candle. Right? So... Um, Support resistance, break and close, retest, the zone holding, say you you uh, trade reversals, right? And this same red line up here, which is this resistance, let's say you wanted to trade short and this triple top is your pattern. Your trigger could have been this third confirmation of a rejection to this zone with this third touch and fail to break up there, right? So... You could have support resistance holding be your trigger. You can have supply and demand zones. Just the same as with support and resistance, you can have it be a pullback trade. You could have it be a reversal trade. Um, however it may be, that is determined on the trader. Let's say uh, this uptrend you were trading, we have this demand zone created down here. <coughs> Let's say you want to trade the first time price comes back to this demand zone and trades within it. Then right down here, you could have had a trade triggered, stop below the zone, target maybe up here or so that wouldn't have hit the target, but <coughs> just showing you an example, you could have your trigger be whether price comes and touches the beginning of the zone, whether you have your trigger be if price comes all the way to halfway through the zone, if price comes and touches the end of the zone but doesn't break it. There's a number of different um, elements you could create a trigger with. And again, it should be very personalized. It should depend on you, the time frame you're trading, the style you're trading, your strategy, your personality, your patience level. All of that needs to go into effect. The only way to find out all of that is to start trying it, start testing it out, start seeing how you like different strategies, seeing how you feel trying different things. Um, you need to determine, you know, your your time frame you're going to be trading. You need to determine uh, the exact trade setups you're going to be looking for. Are you a pullback trader? Are you a breakout trader? Are you a reversal trader? Are you a counter trend line trader? 
Um, there's a number of different styles of trading out there, so you need to determine what you are, and that is going to help you identify what um, types of entries to look for. You could have trend line bounces be your trigger. Um, one of my favorite trading styles is, let's drop this down a time frame, the four hour might help us see it a little better. Um, let's say we're in an uptrend. I love trading counter trend line breaks in uptrends. So let's say we're in this uptrend, we have this chart pattern forming, and we have this counter trend line, right? You could have played the break of this counter trend line. This forms a nice little pennant, right? So you could have traded the break of this trend line, stopped below the bottom of the trend line, and uh, that could have been your, your long trade. You could trade trend lines in the direction of the trend, right? So let's say um, this trend line's here, right? You could have traded when price came and hit it here and rejected here, you could have traded the trend line there in the direction of the trend line. Right, so you could trade trend lines just like support and resistance. You could trade their break and close. You could trade just their break. You don't have to wait for a candlestick to close just when price breaks it. You could trade when the trend line's respected and price looks like it's following it. You can trade a number of different ways, but I encourage you guys to try them out. Chart patterns, another awesome, awesome style of trading. Again, like I said here, you could have played this triple top. That could have been your trigger, the formation of the third top. You could have traded this head and shoulders. This right shoulder forming, completing, could have been your trigger. You can trade um, double tops and double bottoms with, uh, in the direction of or against the trend. You can have a pullback where price pulls back double bottoms and that's your trigger to go long. You can have price reverse off of a resistance with a triple top, with a triple bottom. Um, there's a number of different methods to identifying these trades as long as you know how to properly look for them and identify them. Um, you can combine support and resistance with an indicator. So we have indicators. Let's see, I'm gonna remove this. I'll just hide it. Um, so we've got an RSI here, right? <clears throat> we could play it. Let's say we wanted to trade breakouts, right? So what we could have done is this same breakout we we're trading here, we could have had our trigger be when the RSI crossed into oversold territory, right? So where did price cross into oversold territory? Right there. That is right on the same point of this big bar. So um, hopefully you're on a smaller time frame chart identifying that. And that's how you know, okay, I'm executing my trade because the RSI just broke into um, overbought territory at the same time as my resistance was breaking for my breakout. You could have the moving average crossover. Let's say this was an uptrend, right? We have this pullback here. You could then look to get long when the moving averages cross back over to bullish. So this is your bearish crossover here. 20 crosses the smaller time period, crosses below the 50, the higher time period, period. And then you could have this have been your trigger once it crosses back up and above. The smaller crosses back up and above the larger. That could show you, okay, the trend looks like it's ready to continue. The pullback is over and I'm ready now to look to take my long position. Right? Um, you could have, uh, not that we're covering exits here because this is an entry video, you could have a moving average crossover also be your exit. Say you're a trend trader, you've been in this long, following the trend, you wanna get out when the moving average is crossed because that tells you the trend is coming to an end. This crossover could have been your exit, right? So enough of that, but this could be your trigger. You could have your trigger be support and resistance on an SMA. So you could be, if, if price comes back and you get a bounce off of a 20 SMA on a pullback and an uptrend, that could be your trigger. You could have when price breaks the 20 SMA be your trigger, right? So you're looking for a breakout, price is below the 20, you enter when price breaks above it. There's a number of different ways to formulate and combine these things to identify entries. You just need to mess around with them and find the ones you like. Um, again, there's MACD crossovers. You've got a, a signal line in the MACD indicator. Again, just throw in a Google search MACD 
moving average crossover. Um, then you can uh, also use parabolic SAR. I'll try to throw one of them on the chart here real quick so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So these little dots that you're seeing here with price action is our parabolic SAR. Again, let's say we trade pullbacks. You could have been in an uptrend here. We have a pullback. <coughs> price hit support on a trend line on a 50% fib. Our trigger to enter is the parabolic SAR breaking. So the parabolic SAR right now is trading above price action. Boom. This candle came up and broke it. And what does that do? Sends the parabolic bar SAR now down below price action. That could have been your trigger. As soon as that parabolic SAR gets broken, um, it flips to the other side. So whether you want to do it short and you want to take it when it breaks the bottom parabolic SAR, that's your trigger short, or long when it breaks the top parabolic SAR is another one of them that could easily be your trigger. You could have it very simple, very cut and dry, very easy to identify, and it could be what you use as your trigger. You also have, as I said, your divergences. So again, using one of these examples, <clears throat> let's see if I can just find a quick divergence example. Here we go again with this guy. Um, we have this triple top here, right? And what do we see? Price is setting a higher high here, right? Candle went up higher than this one here. The exact time period on the indicator, we see we set a lower high. So price is diverging in opposite directions of the indicator. This can be our confirmation and our trigger to enter. That's a little bit tougher of a trigger because that's again gonna be subjective. We like objective triggers. They are very clear cut, very easy to identify. If X happens, I do Y. And that is why I like using um, candlestick patterns. Candlestick pattern has a very determinable um, set of conditions. It is very easy to identify. Anybody, you give a third grader a chart, teach them what a candlestick pattern looks like, and you could have them identify them. There's no if, ands, or buts. So I like them. I like break and closes. I like retests. I like counter trend line breaks. There's a number of different things that I like. I like the RSI overbought, oversold break. I like um, Fibonacci levels. There's a number of different things you guys can use. Um, the most important thing is for you to get out there and try them out, test them out, see what you like, see how you feel, and then back test. Once you find something that you think you like, that think fits your uh, strategy and your personality, get on a back testing um, software or even TradingView has a back testing function now right here where you can go to replay and pick a point in time and let price play out those candles that's how you back test right so you guys can back test on TradingView for free so um, just figure out what you want to use practice determine what fits your strategy you have to have a strategy to determine an entry Determine your strategy, build an entry, build a stop loss, build a take profit, and try it out. See how it goes. See what you like. Then you find out what works, what doesn't work, and then from there, you have a um, base to build off of and a plan to build off of. All right, guys. I hope you like this video on identifying entries. I'm doing it live as a webinar, so I'm going to go ahead and hop over to my students, see what they want me to cover, see what um, everybody else in this public webinar wants to see. And we'll go from there. But thank you guys. I appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos. I hope you enjoy what you see. I'll catch you in the next one.